Let's talk about something that many of us want to achieve at some point in our lives, and that's becoming a millionaire. I remember growing up learning about the term millionaire and thinking that it looks something like this. <laughs> having exotic cars parked in the driveway, owning your own private jet, or having a mansion like this. Wait, isn't that Batman's house? Yes. <laughs> yes it is. It's Bruce Wayne's house from Batman Begins. Bruce? Rachel? You were gone a long time. I know. So in reality, being a millionaire isn't having fancy exotic cars, your own private jet, owning a mansion like Wayne Manor, or secretly beating up criminals, you know, at night at bat, Batman. <laughs> um, instead, it's sitting in your living room on a Saturday night, hoping that your three kids don't wake you up while you're trying to film your YouTube videos. Driving a used minivan, which are just black, so it's kind of, you know. Yeah, it's kind of like a... Like the Batmobile. Why not? <laughs> Building magnetile castles and fairy houses, and yes, changing the occasional and many dirty diapers. Yes. We know what you guys are thinking. How can I become a millionaire and do everything that we just mentioned? That's a great question. We started off right out of college making $35,000 a year. We had student loans. We drove the same cars that we had in high school to becoming millionaires at 35. Make sure to check out this video to show, and we'll show you exactly how we did it. There's a link to it in the upper right and in the description below. All this was done without inheriting any money, not coming from rich families, and with young children. Today we're going to share some of the things that we did and some of the things that we would change if we could go back and talk to our younger selves. So let's walk through what it's like to go from nothing to becoming a millionaire. Hey guys, it's Jared and Amber from Holy City Family. Our mission is to empower you to achieve financial independence so that you can pursue your dreams and ambitions in life. So now we've got some amazing content lined up for you guys. We've got our 2021 year in review. We've got how to invest like Warren Buffett, healthcare and early retirement, and more fire journey updates. So if you're interested in ways to learn, save, and grow, be sure to subscribe to our channel and follow us on Instagram so that you don't miss out on our new videos that come out on Sundays at 10 a.m. <laughs> One of the first steps we took to becoming millionaires was paying off debt. Total consumer debt is on the rise, as you can see from this chart from the Federal Reserve of New York. The average U.S. household now has over $155,000 worth of debt. That's $55,000 worth of debt per person, according to MoneyGeek. When paying off debt, the first thing you want to do is you want to make a list of all that debt. Include things like the type of debt, the balance, your interest rate, and minimum monthly payments. Determine the maximum you can pay every month. This is where a budget comes in handy so you can see how much you need to pay for necessities and how much spending you might be able to trim so that you can put that towards paying off the debt. Lucky for you, we're going to talk about budgets in more detail in a few minutes in this video. So now that you have a list of all your debts and you know how much money you can pay towards debt every month, pick your repayment strategy. Here's a few ideas from Principal Financial. The snowball method is where you pay the smallest debt as fast as possible. Debt avalanche is where you pay the largest or the highest interest rate debt as fast as possible. And then you have debt consolidation, which is where you combine debts into a single account. So we actually chose the debt avalanche method um, that we were, where we were able to tackle our highest debt first and also kind of secretly because debt avalanche sounds pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think Why so. not? The next step that we took towards becoming millionaires was choosing to live beneath our means. Living below your means means that you spend less than what you make. In other words, you have money left over at the end of the month and you're not living paycheck to paycheck. You're not having to go into more debt to pay off your living expenses. And this one can be very challenging with all the temptations out there to buy those things that you want and while you technically have, technically have the money to buy it with. Um, the trick here is to resist that temptation and focus on the long term, what you want for the long term. Here are a few things that we did to live beneath our means. One was limit, limiting dining out as much as possible. At the beginning of our journey, we learned that we, we were spending about $600 a month. And gradually over time, we've been reducing that and reducing it. And now we're to the point where we spend $50 or less dining out per month. We, we buy used cars that are three years old and they have less than 45,000 miles. We found that that's the sweet spot where depreciation has started a flat line and where you get the best value. Right. And we only buy houses that we can easily afford and have great resale value. We do a lot of diligent research on the real estate market. We compare sales. We look at neighborhood amenities and historical appreciation rates before we actually buy or build houses. 
Um, another one that we do is our grocery shopping. We usually try to do it at a discount store like Aldi instead of using mm -hmm. those big box trendy ones like Whole Foods. According to grocerychristians.com, Aldi is actually 21 to 74% cheaper than Whole Foods. So here's a great chart from grocerychristians.com that shows how some basic products compare in value between Aldi and Whole Foods. Look at how much more expensive things are at Whole Foods in the beverage category, bread, dairy, frozen, and personal care. Some of these may sound too extreme and maybe they're not for everyone, <laughs> but the reality is that very successful people don't have an income problem, they have a spending problem. If you're watching, you're probably already trying to do everything you can to make as much money as you can. You just need to be prepared to make a sacrifice, to hunker down for the next 10 years or so, to save and invest as much money as you can, and that will set you up for the rest of your life. Ask yourself this question that Graham Stephan asked us. Is one decade of frugal living worth it for an entire lifetime of freedom? To never have to do something you don't want to do, to never worry about losing your job, or to be your own boss. Another critical part to becoming millionaires is starting to budget and save money as soon as possible. At the start of our journey, we didn't have a budget, nor did we save much of our paycheck on a monthly basis. Aside from our larger purchases, like our mortgage payment and our car payment, we really didn't pay much attention to where we were spending our money or what we were spending it on. When we finally started budgeting, we were pretty stunned to see some of the expenses that we have and how we were spending our money. Um, some of those things were $1,200 that we were spending on dining out and entertainment, $1,200 a month we were spending on that. $1,000 a month on Michael's Arts and Crafts because of right. this one. And over $600 on groceries, which may not sound like a lot, but that was when it was just the two of us, us and we didn't even have our kids. And that's how much we spend now in total for our whole family of five. There are many different methods for budgeting and saving your money, but here's what we do and what we recommend. Start by understanding how much you've spent over the last 12 months and what you have spent your money on. And to do this, we like to export all of our transactions across all of our accounts into Excel or to a similar program and categorize those, um, each of those line items. Review it and identify the areas that actually need adjustment. Track your progress using an online budget tool like Intuit's Mint. Revise your budget monthly to make adjustments because income, mm -hmm. expenses, and priorities will change over time. Right. We created an entire video that walks through creating and managing a budget. Please check that out after this, take a deeper dive on how we budgeted our money to become millionaires at the age of 35. You can click the link in the upper right or in the description below. So the next step is make more money. <laughs> you may be just starting out or have too low of an income, making it seem like an actual taunting task to achieve that millionaire status. This is something that me personally, um, I wish that I had someone tell me before I actually chose my career path. You wanna choose a career or a position where your income is not limited by the number of hours that you work. Don't trade your actual time for your money. There's only so many hours in a week and therefore only so much money that you can make. In over a decade of doing that, it's also really easy to get burned out. And I yeah. say this from personal experience. <laughs> so think about this. There are actual real estate agents out there making you know, 250,000 or more after two to three years in that business. Um, that's not the case for everyone, but if you're good at what you do and you really push yourself, so you can achieve very high income and become a millionaire in a few years. So that's a great uh, field to potentially go in where you're not really trading that time for your money. Um, yeah. And it's really based on what you put into it. Um, sales can also be a great career path for those who are excited about it and like to work with people and like the interaction. Another great option for you if you're looking for you know a career or you're looking to change your path so that you can become that, have that millionaire status is start your own business. Why not? Um, find something that you love or you're good at and build a business out of it. Chances are you're gonna be successful because it's something that you pursued and then it's what you like to do. If you hit it big, you could scale it up really quickly. You could make a lot of money that way. And along with that, if you can live frugally for a few years, um, you can have a million dollars saved up pretty quickly. Yeah, and unfortunately for us, we didn't take either of the other two options. Uh, we worked nine to five jobs on a salary and unfortunately we traded our time for money and we really never felt adequately rewarded for our efforts. Right. So what happens once you take our advice and follow it? You eliminate your high interest debt, you live beneath your means, you budget your money, and you take steps to ensure that you make enough money. Well, you start to invest it. Investing in the stock market was instrumental in us becoming millionaires at 35. Here's how we recommend you invest in the stock market. If your employer offers a 401k, contribute up to the match that they provide. And just an FYI, the maximum contribution for 2021 was 19,500 
and in 2022, it's going to be 20,500. The nice thing about doing that is that the contribution is an automatic payroll deduction, so you won't even see that in your paycheck and you won't be tempted to spend it. Right. Once you're contributing up to the match that your employer offers on their 401k, open and start contributing to an individual retirement account or an IRA. This is similar to the 401k, but depending on which brokerage you use to create the IRA account with, you will likely have access to a wide variety of equities to invest in. For example, mutual funds, index funds, individual stocks, ETFs, bonds, commodities, and maybe even cryptocurrency. The maximum contributions are $6,000 per year, $7,000 if you're over the age of 50, and if you're married, your spouse can also contribute. Right. So for example, Amber and I both contribute 6,000 a year for a maximum of 12,000. If you're able to contribute even more, once you've maxed out your 401k, you've contributed the max to the IRA, you can open a brokerage account and start investing in the stock market that way. That won't have the tax advantages that the IRAs and the 401ks do, but I can assure you that it will become a powerful tool in your wealth building. Regardless of the type of account you invest in, we like to invest in a combination of index funds, individual stocks, long-term corporate bonds, long-term treasury bonds, and preferred stocks. For index funds, we look for a low expense ratio and a coverage across small, mid, and large cap companies. So for example, SPY for large caps, MDY for mid caps, and IWM for small caps. They're some of the largest and highest volume ETFs for the respective market caps. For individual stocks, we've created a number of different videos explaining how we invest in the stock market, like Warren Buffett. Mm -hmm. There's also a link in the upper right hand corner to those videos and in the description below. We even created a video that breaks <laughs> down our entire million dollar stock portfolio. So make sure to check that out in the link above and in the link below in the description. Another great way to invest is in real estate. And we all know real estate is a really hot thing right now, um, especially it just seems like it's been trending upward. So you can own a primary home, you can own rental properties, you can flip houses or invest in real estate investment trust or REITs, REITs via the stock market. We're on track to make over 300 thousand dollars in profit from slow flipping our primary residences over the past nine years. Slow flipping is when you buy a house that will be your primary residence, you fix it up over time, and then you sell it within one to two years. We created a video that breaks down one of our most recent slow flips where we made over $50,000 in profit. Make sure to watch that video after this one with the link in the description below. So now that we've walked through how to become a millionaire, you might be wondering, how long is this gonna take me? <laughs> Since the national median family income for the U.S. is about $80,000, let's keep that actual number in mind. Let's also assume that you invest your money in an index fund like SPY, which has an average annual return of 10%. If you invest $200 every month, you could become a millionaire in 39 years. If you invest $1,000 every month, you could become a millionaire in 24 years. Now, if you were to invest in individual stocks or a combination of that and index funds, you could invest $1,000 a month at a 15% rate of return and become a millionaire in 19 years. As you can see, it's really just a numbers game, but the more you invest on a monthly basis, the sooner you'll be able to become a millionaire. Some people might say that this is not realistic and the average person is not able to do this. Well, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> the average person is probably never going to try that or do this. Um, they will think it's a massive waste of their time. They won't make that sacrifice needed to actually make that happen. So I have, a, I have a feeling and we have a feeling that if you're watching this all the way to this point, you probably aren't really average. If we believe none of this was achievable, we never would have met this milestone. We had the belief and the determination to achieve it and that became our drive. So if you start early, you pay off your high interest debt, you live beneath your means, start budgeting, make more money and invest your money wisely, you too can become a millionaire. Thank you so much for watching our video all the way to the end. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up, hit the notification bell, and subscribe to our channel. Join us as we learn, save, and grow together. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Get in my